Um, so hello, hello everybody who's uh, coming on. Please leave your name at the end of your comment because um, I can't always like read what the little thing is. But thank you for um, coming on and thank you for the hearts. If you guys like these scopes, just tap on your screen and I will do more of these. And there is Lilo eating some apple because I don't have dinner ready yet. Um, and so I noticed and was wondering what you were going to make with it. So I'm just going to roast it. Um, because that's, that's super easy. I already have the oven preheated to 400 degrees, so once this is done, I can pop it in. Should be done in about half an hour, but the rest of dinner is done. I have a chicken stew that I just made in the Instant Pot. I have a tray of roasted broccoli in the toaster oven. This is just kind of extra vegetables. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo, and this is my home kitchen, and this is what I make for dinner. Um, I'll hop on Periscope every once in a while to show kind of useful cooking tips. Um, I haven't been on in a few days because I've been busy. But anyway, so I take, um, oh, and Henry's actually home, so he'll be asking questions that I can't see because I'll be chopping stuff up. So this is actually kind of a small butternut squash. This is one of my favorite squashes besides kabocha because it's... Ew. Yeah, did you hear that? Ollie said, ew, because he doesn't like it. <laughs> so I think this will just be for Henry and I. Um, but what I do is I cut off both ends with a sharp knife. And this is you know, kind of tricky. Um, you do need a sharp knife. And you got to make sure that it's not rolling around. So after I cut off the top and bottom, and I'm going to throw it in my spin, I peel the skin off because then it makes the rest of the chopping easier to do. So this is my favorite peeler. It's a OXO peeler. Um, I've used one of these, I think, forever. I want to um, yes, Ollie? Are we going to do a giveaway? Are we going to do a giveaway? Yeah. I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have anything to give away. I mean, I guess we could. Maybe, like, the this. nicest comments. The nicest comments get what? Get a copy of the cookbook that's signed. Really? Well, maybe we'll do that. Maybe at the end, um, if we have time and you guys ask nice comments, we will give away the uh, nicest comments. The nicest comments. Lisa had a question from earlier around uh, whether you nice can comments. pan fry your tuna cakes. Uh, you mean I would still bake them and then I pan fry them at the end because I think they might be a little too wet to just pan fry completely, but you can always make them as like little pancake looking things um, and that will work too. So do you see how awesome this peeler is? It just goes right through the skin and I um, I peel quite, not quite a bit, but there's always like extra that I peel because I think the skin goes for a few layers and you don't want tough butternut squash. And so after I do the top part, then I just do the bottom part. And are you just reading questions, Ollie? No, I'm just going to check out my weird face. So oh, you want to be like Owen and make weird no, faces no, on I'm, I'm just <laughs> pretending that's my mirror. Oh, okay. Because I made up this But you know, it's a mirror, but there are really lots of people no. who can see you making faces. And so here, I know this is super boring, but this is how you do it. Or at least how I do it. Melissa from San Diego asked whether you can do a periscope on how to use the Instant Pot. Oh, yeah. I think I I did do one a few weeks back. Um, I think if you go to catch.me slash nom nom paleo, and that's catch with a K, you can see some of my older ones, but I can do an Instant Pot one. Um, do you have any special requests for what recipe you want me to do? Um, I do have some kale in the fridge, so I could do a kale and carrot one. Um, so that one is really quick, and it's one of my favorite ways to make kale. And if anyone wants me to eat, Mom. Yes. So now, well, you can just break the in from the corner if you want. Mary asks, what's the name of that toaster oven again? Oh, it's a Breville Smart Oven. Um, and I guess I can turn it around after I'm done. But I've just peeled off the skin because this makes chopping the um, butternut squash way, way easier once the skin is off. So it's all, the top is cut off, and then I've peeled off all the skin just with my peeler. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it 
um, right here because this should all be meat and then this part is kind of the weird part that has the seeds in it. Sherry asks whether your figures are still available. Oh yeah, we have we have lots of no no paleo action figures. And you can just how do you I think You can go to the website, I think, yeah. and on the sidebar there's a link to it. Yeah, so I've just cut this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make all of the pieces uniform because I want my tray of butter and its squash to um, cook at the same time. So I just cut this one in half. And I always try to lay it on a on its flat surface when I can, because um, then it won't roll around and I won't cut myself. When will you write another cookbook or update the iPad app? Uh, the iPad app, we are in the process of um, making it a universal app, so it'll be available on the iPhone. Um, and so if you already own the iPad version, you get the iPhone version for free. And for those of you who don't have an iPad, now you can get it for your iPhone. Um, and we are making it so that we can update it um, whenever we can. Because before we would be dependent on our um, developers. So this part has the seeds and I just scoop it out into the compost bin. Um, and then in terms of a book, um, we are we are potentially writing another book, right? <laughs> But not yeah. anytime soon. <laughs> um, but it's one that we've been, you know, mulling over for a long time because we, we really want it to be something really useful. Um, and I think we've come up with a, a good concept. Michelle from San Diego asks what oh, so your see, favorite I've just it out. brand of knife is. Uh, well, I have, I have three knives um, and they're all pretty old. Um, let's see, let me grab this one. I don't know which one this is. This is a Henkel's. It's so old I can't even read it anymore. And it just, this is a nice solid wood that I have that fits well in my hand. I like this one a lot. This is a Messermeister Gyoto, so it's a Japanese style, so it's lighter. And then I have another Japanese knife. But this one I like a lot, it feels good in my hand. You have the best podcast. Oh, thank you. We we recorded one, but we have a lot of editing to do. So now these are the three pieces I'm going to cut up. And you can see that they're, they're all kind of different. So I try to make them all about whatever size these will end up being because these are the smallest. And it's kind of like the rate limiting step. So I just cut them. And then... Depending on how soon I need these ready, because everything else is ready and this is just kind of extra and we might not really eat it tonight. We might end up eating it, um, I don't know, or I might roast it and I can make soup with it. I'm not really too concerned. But I'll probably cut them around this size and they're all about this size and it'll take probably 30 minutes total. Adriana asks, do you make spaghetti squash? I do sometimes. I don't love it. I think I, I think I used to always undercook it, and I thought it was gross and squeaky. Um, and then I think when I finally cooked it properly, I was like, oh, it's fine. But I don't love it. I, I like these kind of squashes better. But I understand that it's a nice like spaghetti um, alternative, but it's not my favorite. Henry says, I broiled eggplant last night for the first time using your recipe, thanks. Oh, yes, that is the only way I think I like to cook eggplant is to broil it. So now is just kind of the tedious task of me cutting these in the same size. I will put them on this parchment lined baking sheet and toss it with ghee and some seasoning. What's your favorite kind of squash to cook and why? Uh, I like kabocha because um, I like the texture a lot. The texture, um, it's kind of, it's drier than like a butternut squash and it has a lot of flavor. It's kind of like, um, I almost want to say it's kind of potato-y, um, but it tastes really good. So kabocha is my favorite. Butternut squash is probably my second favorite. Is butternut squash the same as butternut pumpkin? Uh, I think it is, but I'm not sure. What temperature are you um, cooking the butternut squash in? I almost always roast everything at 400 uh, convection roast. 
Um, and I like the convection mode if you have it on your uh, oven because that way the air circulates and I think it cooks more evenly um, and it's faster. Do you ever use Miracle Noodles? And if so, do you have any good recipes? I have never used Miracle Noodles. I know a lot of people like them. They're the shirataki noodles. I'm not really sure what it's made out of. Um, but I have tried kelp noodles, which are very similar. And I have a recipe for a kelp noodle, noodle stir fry on my blog, elmompaleo.com, that you can look up. And I'm sure you could do the same recipe with uh, shirataki noodles. Juliet says it's too hot in LA to turn on the oven. It's kind of hot here too, but I think it's less hot than me stir frying on the pot. Oh, Owen just made a really cool, do you want to show people what you sculpted? It's kind Owen of Owen likes to sculpt things out of clay. And we're looking for a sculpting instructor for him, because I certainly don't know how to teach him how to sculpt. If not convection, should I be at 450? Yeah, 450, 425. There's actually a really funny um, YouTube video that I saw once where they said you have to roast vegetables super, super high heat or else you're totally doing it wrong. And so I think anything above 400 is good. Um, if you don't have convection, just make sure you rotate your tray and you stir your vegetables so they're evenly cooked. See, I'm almost done cutting all these. It does take a while. That's probably why this was on my counter for as long as it was, just because I'm like, ugh. To cut this up. Hey, Owen, oh, your, uh, your, your other little sculptures by the sink. Oh, it is? The little teeny one that you did the other day. All right. Okay. I'm almost done. This is exciting. Can you put butternut squash in a crock pot? If so, how long? Uh. Me, I'm so. sure you can. Did we do a squash and pork? Slow I have a recipe. kabocha squash and pork slow cooker recipe, um, but not the squash by itself. Um, I'm sure people have used the um, slow cooker to cook a, a whole squash, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what the, I don't know how long they cook it. Lori asks, what other vegetables do you like to roast with your butternut squash? Oh, so this chain I'm just going to do plain. Um, Sometimes I'll throw carrots in, sometimes I'll throw parsnips. You want stuff that will be about the same texture. So like these are pretty hard and it'll it'll take like a good 35 minutes, I think, to cook all this. Um, so carrots or other root vegetables or other squash that's the same size. Sometimes I'll throw in uh, onions or shallots, but sometimes those things burn before these are cooked all the way. So I just, you know, I throw on some ghee and then I just season it and I throw it in by itself. Someone asked whether you can do a periscope on cutting up a kabocha squash because those are so treacherous to peel. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. You know what I do with a kabocha is I don't always peel it because you can't eat the skin on kabocha. Um, and so sometimes I just hack through it and I keep the skin on. Um, and then you can always just eat around the skin when you're done cooking it if you don't like the skin. Someone also asked about the turmeric tonic. Oh yeah. Can you use some fruit other than mango? Yeah, we've used pineapple, we've used pineapple and banana, um, we've used coconut milk or coconut water or almond milk in place of the coconut water. I kind of stick to kind of more tropical fruits because it's going to end up being like a spicy uh, drink. Um, so that's it. So I've just put some ghee and I've just kind of tossed it and then now I'm just going to season it. What brand ghee do you use? Oh, well see this one is Tin Star. This is the first time I tried it. I bought it on Thrive Market and this brown butter cultured ghee is really good. I normally buy pure Indian foods ghee. I have a bunch of that as well and I really, really like it. Um, People are asking me what you just put on the squash and it's ghee. I just put some ghee and then I'm just going to put some salt and then I'm going to put some sort of seasoning. And I normally, since I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to put salt and then this umami sea salt, which I bought um, from this place in Oakland called Oak Town Spice Shop. Um, and it's really good. It is, it's uh, sea salt, shiitake mushrooms, and black garlic powder. And so this will just boost the flavor and then I can do whatever I want with um, the squash. 
Diane's on. She said hi. Oh, hey, you know, I saw, when I put this up, I saw that she was on Periscope. I was like, oh, shoot, I'm going to miss her Periscope. Um, somebody asked whether you could do this without fat. Oh, why would you? Um, <laughs> if for whatever reason you're trying to cook with less fat. Um, I don't know. You could. I think that it won't roast as well. I think you need the, the fat to help it roast. Um, you know, fat's not bad for you if you use good fats. Okay, so this I've seasoned. And as you can see here, I make sure it's all in one layer. They're not all on top of each other. And if you look, they're about the same size because I want this to cook evenly. So we're just going to stick it in the oven. I set the timer for 15 minutes because then I know to check it. Um, but then I think that's it. Joyce says, love the magic mushroom powder. Thank you. Henry, I need a Lego tripod. I know, I was telling Henry that that should be our new gig is we should have him make these <laughs> Lego tripods. Um, so I guess I guess Ollie had suggested that we give away a signed book so we can randomly pick the next person who has a nice comment. How are you going to decide who I don't has know. a nice comment? Henry Rocks. Oh, that's a good one. We'll give it to RK Khan. Do you already have a book? If you already have a book, we can give you socks and a doll. So RK Khan, you won. So you can um, DM me on Twitter. I don't know if you can do private messages here. That's how much we know. So RK <laughs> Khan, you can email me at michellenomnompaleo.com and we will figure out how to get you a little Nom Nom Paleo uh, prize package. Um, and that is it. I'm actually going to Camp Nerd Fitness on Wednesday, so hopefully I will get that out before then. Um, and that is that. Do you make dessert? Not very often. Just because if I do, I will eat them all. Um, speaking of magic mushroom powder, I can't find dried porcinis, not even in Thrive. Well, Amazon has it. Um, I don't always use just porcinis. I buy whatever organic dried mushrooms are on sale. Shiitake is really great. Um, and then the mixed mushrooms are fine. Sometimes I just pick out the ones I don't like. And the ones I don't like are just like if they have like weird woodier um, you know, mushrooms in there. But if it all gets pulverized, all mushrooms add umami. And I think that's it. I think everybody's hungry in our house. That will keep cooking and only Henry and I will eat it anyway. Um, but we've got broccoli and chicken stew that I have to, and rice because we do eat rice um, for dinner. All right, bye everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye.